began to raise, guess what the ark did? It was escalated because God was faithful. As the waters of judgment began to rise, guess what? So did Noah and his family. You understand what I'm saying? Do you hear me out there, what I'm trying to tell you today? This is why you have to come to Christ as your place of spiritual dwelling. Because as God's wrath and judgment continues to be poured out on this earth day after day after day after day, Romans chapter 1, look it up for yourself. God is giving people over to reprobate minds, useless futility, apostasy at an all-time high. You can just turn on the news, man. It makes you sick, dude. I'm telling you. But see, if you're in Christ, God makes a promise that he will cover you and he will escalate his faithfulness toward you. And I like that. Because he says that, he said, his faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. Now, I want you to think about how a shield protects you. A protection, that God offers protection as he escalates his faithfulness. But not only that, a buckler is something that pulls around and, and it fastens everything together. Solidarity. Solidarity. You've got to remember that because God is one. In three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's called the Blessed Trinity. Each functioning in their own individual person, but yet never functioning outside of one another's will. Solidarity. They're on one accord. Would you like to be on one accord with God today in His spiritual dwelling? Would you like to be elevated to a position of holiness with Him in Christ? Would you like to embrace the escalation of His faithfulness so that you would see what he wants to do in your life. And thirdly, would you like to see the fear extracted? You know, we live in a time and an age where fear, it dominates many people. They're scared to go out of their house. They lock their doors at night. They, they nail their windows shut. Don't let my kids go with them people, man. Don't go to that neighborhood, man. But I want you to see what God's Word says when you belong in a place of spiritual dwelling. You will not fear the terror of night. And let me tell you something. The word you will not fear, it's not a suggestion if you get what I'm saying. See, God don't suggest a whole lot of things, though, okay? You understand what I mean? God commands. He's the only one who can command and mean it. The rest of us, we can't mean it. God says, you will not fear the terror of the night when the darkness looms upon your life. <clears throat> the Bible says, you will not fear because you have made Christ your spiritual dwelling place. And it extracts the fear. I love how the Apostle Paul says, but I know whom I have believed. I know Paul said, man, in, in the letter to Timothy, he's like, look, everybody left me, man. I'm here by myself, but I'm still doing it. The Lord stood with me, and he strengthened me. See, many people won't even go. We live in a time, man, I'm afraid to touch the doorknob. I'm afraid to touch the sink in the bathroom. I'm afraid to cut the lights off. We are so phobied out <laughs> in this society today. It's, it's, it's insanity, man. It's insanity at an all-time high. But the Bible says, you will not fear the terror by the night, nor the arrows that fly by day. Anybody under a personal attack today at your job place, or by a friend, or by a loved one, or by an enemy at your workplace, or at, uh, anywhere in your life, in your neighborhood, anywhere. The arrows are flying at you every day. He said, she said, they said, this did. I went down here, the dude at the gas station was freaking me out, man. And, you know, uh, you know, all the arrows that fly by day, the many, many, many circumstances and the situations that come at you each day. The Bible says when you make Christ your spiritual dwelling place, you will not fear the terror. <laughs> no, you will not. Nor the arrows that fly by day. You know, there was a time, I was, and most of you know that seeing this, if you don't know, God just got me out of prison. Fifteen right. years since, God turned it all the way around for me. Got me out five and a half years early just so I could do what I'm doing here. But I want right. to tell you a little story about something real quick. A personal touch of what happened. I, I had an issue with a guy one day. I had belonged to Christ. Uh, now a couple, you know, a couple of years I've been walking pretty hard in the ministry, helping, you know, serving, learning, growing, you know, you know. So I sat at a table with a black friend of mine at a table that I wasn't supposed to be sitting at. Mm. 
So this guy, man, he blows up right there. You know, he starts saying all this crazy nonsense, man. He's, he's threatening me, and he's threatening, you know, and all the on. You know, and I'm thinking, man, what am I going to have to do? Am I going to have to treat this fool or what, you know? And I thought, you know what? The Lord is, is my shepherd. He will watch me. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. You know what, man? I'll pray about this, man. So I go to my cell, right? Boom, I drop down on my, my GPS, and I lock in on him, you know? When I lock in, man, I bust up like Hebrew says, boldly into the throne room of grace. And I'm like, hey, yo, God, man, this dude's freaking me out, man. I don't know what's going on. I'm about to buzz this dude up. Literally, about two hours after I got done praying, that dude got attacked by another dude on the ball field. And see, God had already seen what was about to happen. And he said, Shannon, get over here. Pray for your enemy. You pray for him. You pray that I will bring him to repentance. You pray that I will save him. And if he's a danger to you, don't worry. Because the arrows that fly by day, you will not fear. Nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. And I love this. It says, a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. It will not come near you. See, because when you make Christ your spiritual dwelling place, it elevates you to a position with God. It escalates God's faithfulness. It extract, extracts the spirit of fear. But you can also expect the supernatural. Mm. You understand? You can expect the supernatural. See, that's the problem with many of us in the faith today because we don't believe that God is a supernatural God anymore. Uh, he don't do miracles no more, man. They, they don't speak in tongues no more, man. They don't pray in tongues. Man, them dudes are weirdos, man. God don't do miracles anymore. God don't heal people no more. Well, I'm here to tell you today the God I serve does. Amen. The God of the Bible does. The God of the Bible, he does that. And I can assure you of that. And I love this text. It says, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, and no plague will come near your tent. Now, here you go. Now, listen real carefully what the Word says. See, because I said that you can expect the supernatural. Expect it. Right here. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. See, you can expect a supernatural victory. You can expect it if Christ is your dwelling place. That's right. You have to understand that. That's of the utmost importance. It is your confession and your profession unto Jesus Christ that opens up the supernatural door. You know, Jesus said when they was about to kill the brother on the cross, you know what he said? He's like, yo, man, my kingdom ain't even of this world. He's like, if it was, and it was really about to go down like this, he said, my, he said I can command 10,000 legions of angels to come down here right now. Yeah. See, if you don't believe in supernatural, and, see, and, and I know that many of you believe in supernatural but you need to believe in the God of the supernatural, okay? Right. Because you, you don't pray to angels, you don't pray to saints, you don't pray to Mary. There's only one intercessor between man and God, and that's the person of Jesus Christ. Him, he was the word who became flesh and dwelt among us, that we may behold his glory as the only begotten Son of God. And so I hope somehow, some way today, this message can touch your heart. God has asked me to do this. He has allowed me to do this as a privilege uh, to, to, to bring the Radical Witness Ministry into your life via Facebook. I'm starting out right now on the porch right here in Bristol, <laughs> right here, just straight up with the iPhone, the whole hookup. Praise God for technology, right? Praise God for technology. And so as we get ready to close, man, I hope that somehow this will, you know, touch your life. But I want to tell you that supernatural God that I'm talking about, He'll bring you victory because I want you to hear the, the final verse. It says, You will treat on the lion and the adler, the young lion and the serpent. You will trample under your foot. See, if you're looking for spiritual victory today, you need to come to the spiritual dwelling place, and that is Christ Jesus. He's the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you that anyone who sees this message 
that can be edified or be touched by it, Lord, I pray that you would use it. Thank you. I Peter. pray only, Lord, as a humble servant, as a radical witness for your kingdom, for your glory, for the things that you have done, for I would surely testify of your divine power and your glory. And that alone, Lord, that alone, Lord, is the only thing we stand in today is the blood. I pray for Sacred Cross Church. I pray for all the people on Facebook that read this and all my friends and brothers that That's are joining right. in different prisons and everywhere. Thank you, All Lord. the lost, the broken, the bruised, the homeless, and the hungry. I pray that you would continue to use me as a vessel for your glory. Praise I pray you, that you would touch hearts, that you would open eyes to spiritual reality. Unless one is born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. And so I would pray that you would use my feeble attempt my feeble attempt, Lord, yes, that's that Lord. you would use it, Lord, as I cast my bread up on the waters. Praise I thank Jesus. you, Lord, for all you've done for me, and I thank you for all that you plan to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.